Fractal vices were the biggest trend a few weeks ago, but what are they actually useful for? In this video, I show off my new vice design, as well as put it through some tests, finishing with a face-off with a CNC mill. Will a plastic vice prove useful? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In my last video, I said thank you for 1,000 subscribers, and well, that aged well? With that being said, thank you to everyone who has come past the channel since the last video. The 1000 sub special project I teased last time is pretty much done and I'm keen for making that video once I'm done with this one. Also, real quick, this project is open source and the source files can be downloaded from the description. But anyways, what are we all here for? Fractal Vices. And I'm happy to call version 1 done, and as you can see, it's changed significantly from the previous version. The jaw design is pretty much the same, just scaled up, but everything else is completely fresh, and I'll go over everything it can do now. To begin with, new jaws, specifically new small jaws. And what's better than one new set of jaws? Two new sets of jaws. Shown here are the two types of jaws I've designed for this version. The difference between the two is that one is miles easier to make, but somewhat less effective. The jaws on the left are the more complex option. They feature two tiny swivel jaws just 9mm in diameter. And at this scale, dovetails will not work, at least in plastic, so I had to come up with an alternative solution. So I went with elastic and wire pins. These work fantastically, as you will see later in the video, but are very fiddly to put together and take some time. It took me close to two hours to finish the set. The jaws on the right are the easy option. They feature a flexible TPU front that slots onto a hard PLA back piece. For less complex objects with longer, flat faces, these will more than suffice, but they are less effective on things with more angles. One other small modification to the jaws is these grooves you see here. These small grooves are specifically designed to combat elephant's foot effect, which I had trouble with on my first version. They give a small amount of space to stop rubbing if elephant's foot effect does occur, and they also look cool on camera by adding a bit of separation to each jaw. Next, the body of the vise. The new body is in several more pieces than the previous version, which allows some parts to be printed in a more optimal orientation. It features a channel down the middle which could serve a variety of purposes, including enabling drilling, filling with ballast, or for attaching upgrades which I'll explain in a second. The body also features accommodation for mounting to consumer CNC machines in the form of these six holes. It also features specific holes at each end if you just want to screw it directly to a bench. The whole assembly is held together with lengths of threaded rod that run the length of the vise. These keep it rigid, add weight, and additional mounting options where the rod is exposed. If this hardware is something you don't want to deal with, then perhaps check out one of the fully 3D printer designs out there, like this one from Tomato Lab, linked in the description. The gearbox has also been upgraded. The previous version had the opposite of what you wanted, with one turn of the crank being less than one turn of the jaws. In this version, one turn of the handle is four turns of the lead screws, so much faster to use. The jaws do not have any retention method, and are printed in one piece with support. As I will show later, I have found that in most situations, you do not need a retention method, and if you have a well-tuned printer, the support does not cause issues, as shown here. As a final note before I get onto test, here's a comparison I want to make to the teaching tech model. Specifically, the size of the smallest jaw. Both models have the same number of jaws, but my smallest jaw is half the size of his. Neither is necessarily better, it's down to what you want to use it for. Mine is better for smaller stuff, his larger I presume, I haven't had time to print his yet, but I do plan to in the future for a comparison. That's about it for the general overview. Now onto some tests. I saw a comment on one of the other videos on fractal vices that I think sums them up perfectly. I can't find it again, but pretty much it said that fractal vices are a solution in search of a problem. Some people watching this video will see the examples I give and go, yes, that's perfect for the work I do. 
and others will go, why would I ever use that over a normal vice? Having experimented with this a lot now, even though it can hold the same things as a normal vice, it's definitely not a replacement. To begin with, some general tests. Round objects. Straight objects. Weirdly shaped objects. It holds them all just fine. The one area it struggles in is very small round objects, but if you set it up like I have here, it does work. The larger coin is held perfectly, but the smaller coin is a little loose for me to call it a complete success. Overall though, it does a great job at pretty much everything I've thrown at it. Now onto some more specific tests. Firstly, this commenter mentions working with oddly shaped rocks. I'm not sure what specifically he is doing with them, but I assume perhaps carving or engraving, so here I am testing using a Dremel tool to do this. I'm no artist, but the vice holds up perfectly and the workpiece does not shift. Next, I try a hand drill through a piece of aluminium, and it holds up no problem. But now, onto the main event, a CNC carver. This is a 3018 CNC machine that I've made taller using some spare Ender 3 parts. As mentioned, the vise is designed to mount on this type of aluminium extrusion, so it was easy to attach it using 6 M3 bolts. With the vise clamped down, I set up my first workpiece, and I'll say now, this was way too ambitious and a little silly. With the biggest end mill I had, it was an 11 hour operation, so I naively changed the depth of cut from 0.4mm to 2mm. Way more than is recommended for these cheap machines. The first shallow layer went fine, but it crashed spectacularly on the next pass down. But since it wasn't the vice that failed, I moved on to a more reasonable test. Same timber, a bit of red gum offcut, the same stuff in one of my 3D printed lathe videos, but this time I just want to cut a circle to use it as an SD card tray. With 0.5mm depth of cut, it finishes, but it has lines from the parts shifting in the vise, but only in the first few passes. This suggested to me that the part wasn't settled properly at first, so for my next test, I used a hammer to make sure the part was properly set in the vise. Even with the extra step, the part setup time was still under a minute, and I had a whole top of the part to work on. And, 20 minutes later, I was left with this perfect result. No shifting, and accurate. I measured the centre square, and it was pretty much perfectly square. Worth noting that while it is possible to use it for CNC, as I've shown here, outside of more artistic uses, I can't see it being particularly useful, since getting a part square is difficult to impossible. Perhaps if a part has a reference face that overhangs the vise, it could be aligned reliably, but Realistically, machining parts is not a strong suit, in my opinion. Finally, I want to talk about those upgrades I mentioned earlier. I've made a few examples here that I thought could be useful. Fractal vices are for very specific uses, so I wanted people to be able to customise it to their needs via upgrade slots on the vice. Upgrade parts are printed in grey, for reference. Upgrade 1 is a backlight for under a part. The vise has holes in one end to allow wires or other bolts through under the jaws. Here, I use these and the main mounting holes to mount a backlight. Upgrade 2 is a bracket attached to a helping hands and magnifying glass. With this piece attached, I can add my soldering helping hands to the vise. Could be useful for soldering or the magnifying glass could be used for like detailed engraving or something, I don't know. Third, and probably most generally useful, upgrades are things like drilling supports or covers to make working with smaller parts easier. 
This drilling support bolts under the vise and provides additional support for if a part is being pushed down. I'll just leave this here even though it's not really an upgrade. The handle is in pieces as well now, so if you have a preferred type of handle, it can just be bolted onto this hex section. I feel like this is one of the things people would want to change most commonly, so a diagram should be on screen now with the dimensions to model your own part, should you feel like it. All these are just examples. As mentioned, the files are open source, so if you have something that helps you specifically, you can just design it for yourself. So, final thoughts. After doing a variety of testing, I can comfortably say that even though this is a 3D printed device, it has many, many uses for the right person. While I think I am mostly done with fractal vices for the moment, there are one or two more parts that I think I want to make for it in the future, so stay tuned for that. I will be releasing a build video for this in the next week or so, and the hardware list should already be in the description. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. If you liked what you saw, or anything else on screen now, then maybe consider subscribing and checking out some of my other content. I have many other free 3D printing projects on this channel. Thanks as always for watching, and see you in another video.